So hello, and thank you for joining us today for FIT Authors Talks. FIT Authors Talks is part of the Love Your Library event se series and is an initiative of the FIT Library that brings authors from our community to speak about their work. From photography to fashion illustration, fiction writing to art, these talks encompass a multitude of projects and themes and celebrate creativity. Today, our FIT author is Sylvie Covey. She's an adjunct assistant professor here at FIT who's taught modern printmaking for the last 20 years. Her book, Modern Printmaking, A Guide to Traditional and Digital Techniques, is a fully illustrated instructional printmaking book presenting step-by-step -step examples alongside representative works from 30 top contemporary printmaking artists. Thank you, Professor Covey, for joining us and welcome. Thank you, Jean, for inviting me today. I'm delighted to be here. I will share my screen now. I came to write modern printmaking to record in a book all the techniques I learned and taught. I'm privileged to know and work with many talented artists. My biggest challenge in putting this book together was to select which artist could best represent each technique I wanted to describe. So I had to make tough decisions, tough and practical decisions regarding the book content and aesthetics, which I envisioned technical, historical, and inspirational. It was important to me to write a book that is not just about techniques. I included the history of printmaking at the beginning of each part, putting in context the materials we use today and the content of the artist's profiles. Each artist shows a different approach toward inspirations, influence, work process, and aspirations. The relief process exists in woodblock or linoleum in which the raised surface of the printing block is inked while the carved areas are not. Intaglio is the direct opposite of relief in which a copper, zinc or plexiglass plate is used as a matrix and the incisions created by etching, engraving, dry point, mezzotin or aquatint are inked and printed. Lithography is a planographic method of printing based on the principle that oil does not mix with water. A plate of stone is drawn upon and when prepared for printing with oil-based ink, the surface is dampened with water to reject the ink in, in the non-image area. Serigraphy or screen printing is a stencil technique used using a screen mesh to push the ink onto the printing surface. In mixed media, multiple techniques are combined to achieve a print, or more, sometimes from a print, a sculpture might arise. Post-digital printmaking is a hybrid and intimate connection between printmaker and machine in which image making is both conceptual and physical. My book, Modern Printmaking, also features the profiles of 31 printmakers. I chose to use contemporary artists, professional artists, who best describe each branch and sensibility of printmaking I wanted to approach. Why printmaking? In printmaking, an artist's sense of work is engaged, not just in the pursuit of the final product, but in the value of experience and quality from the process of printing. I first studied printmaking at the École Nationale Supérieure des Arts Décoratifs in Paris, France, in the mid-70s. It turned out this complex medium intrigued me to the point that discovering the variety of its process became the focus of my life. I immigrated to the United States in 1978 and immediately enrolled in a printmaking class at the Art Student League of New York. Eventually, I bought a large Charles Brand etching press in 1980 and set up my own printing studio in my loft on Times Square. 
I became a true New Yorker. I kept attending printmaking class at the Arsenal League and stayed connected with my fellow artist friends. We shared all techniques in class and that would become my teaching philosophy for life. So I started teaching printmaking at the League in 1995 and my League students profiled in his book include Francisco Feliciano, Gregory Herley, Kazuko Yakuda, Mark Pagano, Svetlana Rabe, John Salvi, Ophelia Weber, and Dan Williams. Also, our master printer, Tomomi Ono, and my colleagues, instructors, Bill Banken and Michael Pelletieri. Other talented league artists profiled are Michael Ruling, Jacques Moiroux, Tenjen Ikeda, Bernard Zalon, and Masaaki Noda. In 1992, I had the good fortune to be introduced to Vincent Longo, a respected abstract expressionist, painter, and printmaker. I apprenticed at, as his printer. He was my mentor when I got a Master of Fine Art degree at Hunter College, and I taught at the Hunter College print shop. That experience gave me a real insight into the 21st century art continuum. I printed Vincent Longo's work for the next eight to nine years. Printing for Vinny opened my world to pure abstraction and truly deepened my education and teaching experience. In 1998, I also started teaching at the Art Center of Northern New Jersey in New Milford, where I met a small group of professional artists. Every Thursday for the next 20 years, I was lucky to have an intense and meaningful day of teaching printmaking. I call them my New Jersey girls. Anne Winston Brown, Dale Freed, Sandy Freck, Janet Milston, and Chrissy Rosenberg are also profiled in this book. Then, in the year 2000, through a dear friend who taught at FIT, I met Richard Pitts, a multimedia artist who taught painting and printmaking for 30 some years at the fine art department at FIT. Richard is a free thinker and a continuous creating force. He was very receptive to my innovative photo process at the time non-existent at FIT. So I began teaching printmaking in 2001 at FIT. And there I met my technician and talented printmakers, Slavko Jurik and Marcin Volacic in a print shop. Over the years, from these three different schools where I taught, I have met a vast number of artists from all venues. Eventually, the need for writing modern printmaking came naturally. I discovered the work of Mike Lyon, Shelley Storksensen, Jace Clark, and Val Duval from varied reading sources. And Richard suggested that I look at the work of Karen Kunk. The beginning of printmaking go all the way back to 3500 BC, so we have been making prints for quite some time. At first, prints illustrated religious themes or historical events. But as printmaking techniques evolved over time, artists were increasingly attracted to the medium as a vehicle for artistic expressions. Eventually, art collectors began to appreciate high quality original prints and printmaking was transformed from a merely reproductive process to a fine art. One may ask, what is an original print? The criteria for originality include the image is created by the artist on a matrix. The image is printed by the artist or under the artist's supervision. The print meets the standards of excellence established by the artist. So there is an important distinction between a reproduction of a work of art, such as a drawing or a painting made by photographic or other methods, which cannot be considered an original print, and a print made from an image created from a matrix, on a, from a, a, a matrix such as a stone, a block, or a plate and then hand printed. Today, however, 
The use of pigment transfers, digital photography, and computer numerical control devices has brought us to a new era in which such a rigid distinction may no longer apply. Respectable museums and galleries around the world accept prints made in these new ways as original prints. Such original prints are, in fact, still printed from a matrix, but the definition of matrix has evolved and grown with modern technology. Although a print is often defined as a multiple, an artist could certainly choose to print only one single impression. And in fact, some kinds of prints are one-offs, such as a monotype. Some artists today have adopted an all digital approach in which the output of the digital device, such as a desktop printer, is the final print. Other artists have developed hybrid techniques that combine digital outputs, such as film positives, or machine engraved plates, computer carved woodcuts, with traditional mediums. Prints made using modern technology are of high quality, comparable to the highest standard of traditional etchings, engravings, block prints, screen prints, and lithographs. When new mediums proliferate and lines between genres dissolve, philosophical questions arise about the nature of printmaking. Nowadays, sculptural, environmental, and performance works may contain print components. One of my goals in this book was to highlight printmaking's continuing relevance in contemporary art. Part one, relief. A relief print results from a raised printing surface. A block of wood or linoleum is carved and those portions that remain raised receive the ink, while the portions that are carved away are not printed. Ink is brushed or rolled on the raised surface and paper is pressed on it. The paper is then rubbed by hand or with a tool called a baron or run through a press to produce a relief print. Relief printing is the most ancient method of taking an impression from an object and reproducing it. Hand prints made from soot and charcoal can be seen in many prehistoric caves and testify to human beings' affinity for leaving a trace, a print, to posterity. In the history section, I give a brief history of early prints from China, then of the development of yukoyoi prints in Japan. The artist Mike Lyon, an expert printmaker, kindly shared many of the illustrations of Japanese prints from his private collection. From China, printmaking followed the Silk Road to the Mediterranean. Gutenberg developed the letter press in 1439 with movable cast metal type. Letter press printing remained the usual method of printing until the 19th century, when it was replaced by offset printing, a technique in which the inked image is transferred or offset from a plate to a rubber blanket, then to the paper. I also mentioned the merging of cultural influences from China and Japan to the Western world. In Berlin, the expressionist woodblock printmaking of the group Die Brock, The Bridge, revived woodblock printmaking in 1905, while in America during the 1930s, artists became keenly interested in printmaking. After World War II, Leonard Baskin and Antonio Frasconi were among the many artists exploring woodcut. Of this new generation, Vincent Longo was immediately noticed for his spectacular woodcuts. Other U.S. artists experimenting with color relief were Seong Moy, Michael Ponce de Leon, John Ross, Clara Romano, and Carol Summers. But among the most important of the American artists contributing to the development of relief printmaking, was Robert Blackburn. From woodblock to linoleum. Linoleum blocks were first used as a cheap substitute for wood. Linocut is not as time consuming as woodblock. Early Soviet artists used linoleum blocks 
to create overnight posters for the agit pop movement. And Lionel Cut was also popular in the WPA program for the Great Depression. Pablo Picasso gave new life to the art of relief printing. He disliked the texture of wood and embraced the modern materials of linoleum, a composite of cork, resin, and oxidized linseed oil. Because linoleum has no grain, it allows for fluid carving. Western versus Japanese style relief printing. Relief printing can be done in two basic ways. The Western style uses oil-based inks that is applied to the relief block with a roller called a brayer. It usually involves printing on a press. The Japanese style methods use water-based color and printing is done with a baron. The Western style. Oil-based ink, which are made of pigment mixed with an oil vehicle, produce more opaque and layered and textural effects than water-based inks. Before, because they are not soluble in water, they also allow prints to be re-soaked, reprinted, and worked on again after drying. Relief printing can be done from a single block using oil-based inks or from multiple blocks. The term registration means making sure that the printing block or blocks are correctly aligned on the exact same area of the printing surface. When using a single block, registration ensures that the margins of the paper will be correct. For a multiple multicolor color print, registration ensures that the colors appear exactly where they should within the same frame. The Japanese style. When printing relief in Japanese style, you use water-based pigments and apply pressure by hand when printing using a baron. This is a picture of a baron. The artist makes a key drawing with brush and ink, then pastes it face down on the key block and rubs it until it becomes transparent. The ink design is then carved. The design remains in relief and as area around the drawing lines are cut away. Two registration guides called Kento guides are carved in each block. Traditionally, Japanese woodblock printmaking involved the carving of anywhere from a dozen to 20 or 30 blocks, each uniquely carved for each color to be printed. The reduction method. In the reduction method, a single block of wood or linoleum is cut and printed, then recut and printed again, with a process repeated until the desired outcome is achieved. In this manner, a fixed number of sheets of papers are printed and reprinted, which will ultimately make up the edition. This method can be done in monochrome, single color, or in multiple color. Part two, intaglio. The term intaglio comes from the Italian word intagliare, meaning to carve or to cut into. Intaglio is the opposite of relief in that the incisions on the metal plate are what are inked and printed. In relief, only the top surface is inked. After lines, tones, and textures have been cut, etched, and filled with ink, the surface of the plate is wiped clean leaving ink only in the incisions and indentation. Damp paper is pressed against the plate with enough pressure to force the paper onto the grooves to pick up the ink. Intaglio processes can be divided into two categories, the non-acid techniques and the acid techniques. The intaglio non-acid techniques include dry point, a line is scratched in the middle of plexiglass with a sharp etching needle, raising a burr. When the plate is inked and wiped, the incised grooves hold the ink. Engraving. Lines are cut in the middle with a tool called a burin, and tonality is achieved with hatching and cross-hatching. Cribble. Holes or dots are punched in the middle with a variety of tools. Mesotint. An entire metal plate is roughed up with a rocker 
so the plate would print as a solid black. Working from black to light, tones are achieved by burnishing the plate. Colograph. The surface is built up rather than being cut or etched. Cardboard or other materials are glued in layers and varnished before being printed as an intaglio plate. Sand or carborundum can be mixed with gesso to create textures. The intaglio acid techniques include hard ground etching. A plate is coated with a wax ground and lines are drawn with, a with an etching needle before being etched in acid to make the lines permanent in the metal. Soft ground etching. Drawing and fabrics or leaves or other textures are pressed through a slow drying ground and etched with acid. Aquatent. Particles of acid resist material are fixed on a plate to create a tonal field and etch in gradation of time to render a tonal range. Speed bite. The aquatated plate is brushed with acid rather than immersed in it to create brush strokes. Embossing. A raised impression is created on dampened paper by a deeply etched metal plate. Lift ground or sugar lift. A sugar solution is painted on the plate, then coated in wax ground. When immersed in warm water, the sugar melts a lift to ground so the plane can be etched. Photo etching and photogravure. An etching plate is laminated with a light sensitive polymer and exposed with a positive halftone transparency to UV light, then developed and etched. A brief history of etching. In the 1390s, paper mills opened in Italy and Germany. By the middle of the 15th century, intaglio methods of plate making was, were in widespread use. Engraving first developed in Germany with a medieval imagery and approach, then in Italy, where printmakers were inspired by the classical ideals of the Renaissance. In the 16th century, no engraver came close to Durer art history, but for a while, commercial engravings took over the world and degraded the art form. However, commercial engravings served the useful function of spreading information. Reproductions of Italian Renaissance traveled all over Europe and gave Rembrandt, who never left Holland, the opportunity to study these achievements. Rembrandt was the most gifted artist of his century. He made a series of religious etchings revealing his own spirituality and humanity. In the 18th century, four artists for, from Italy dominated printmaking. Two were Tiepolo, father and son, Canaletto, and Piranesi. In England, William Blake was renowned for devising his own, his own method of etching and printing. He also advanced color printmaking considerably and anticipated modern processes. Francisco Goya was a humanist visionary artist in Spain in the late 18th and early 19th century who possessed extraordinary skills in the newly invented aquatin technique of tonal range. He became the official royal family court painter and thus witnessed the corruption of the Spanish monarchy clergy and government. This inspired Goya to make political and social statements in his prints. In Taglio in 19th century France and England include Edgar Degas, Marie Cassatt, and another, another American in Paris, James Abbott Whistler, who eventually relocated in London. Whistler tirelessly experimented with numerous techniques. And at the beginning of the 20th century, he was the most influential American printmaker. Sp Spanish-born Pablo Picasso produced around 2,200 prints in all printmaking techniques during his career. 
Intaglio in America came to vibrant life during and after World War II. Exiled artists from Europe like Marc Chagall, Max Ernst, John Miro, and Yves Tanguy gathered at William Hater Atelier 17 in New York. Robert Rauschenberg, uh, later, Chuck Close, Jim Clean, Jim Dean, Jasper Jones, Vincent Longo, James Rosenquist, and Robert Rauschenberg contributed greatly to aesthetics and technical innovations in printmaking. Today, contemporary artists such as Vijay Selman, Enrique Chagoya, Susan Kral, Kiki Smith, and Natalia Stern, among others, have significant innovations in, in intaglio printmaking. Tools and materials continue to evolve, and the possibilities are endless. For printing intaglio, there are different metals or for different acids, inks and modifiers, papers and other materials which are described at length. An intaglio plate can be printed in monochrome, spreading and pushing the ink, then wiping the surface with a tarlatan and soft paper. The dampened printing paper is then placed on the inked and white plate and put through the press. Several inks color can be blended on one plate in the technique called a la poupée, or four plates can be inked in consecutive color separations. A plate can be etched in several steps, in several steps of depth, and can be inked and wiped with stiff ink, then rolled with an oily top color. The oil in the ink will repel from the stiff ink, creating a color separation called vi viscosity printing. And an etching can be inked and wiped as an intaglio, and other elements of the image then rolled with the top color. Part four, lithography and serigraphy. The word lithography is derived from ancient Greek meaning stone and writing. Lithography is a planographic method of printing based on the principle that water repels oil. An image is drawn with waterproof substance, either on stone, aluminum, or polyester plates. When ready to print, the stone or plate is dampened with paper and rolled with oil-based ink. The water repels the non-image area while the image receives the ink. Lithography was invented accidentally by the German playwright and actor Anois Senderdefer in 1796 while searching for a cheap way to self-publish his work. Later, cross-hatching with a lithographic pencil and deluding tuche washers to create a tonal range was developed and patented by Charles Holmbeld, Holmandel in London. In France in the 19th century, Honoré Daumier embraced lithography for his caricatures, campaigning against the bourgeoisie and the government. Because lithography is so direct, perfectly reproducing a brush stroke or line drawing, it greatly appealed to painters. Manet, Cézanne, Degas, Odilon Redon, and Pizarro made beautiful lithographs. Lithography came to America in the 19th century with Courier and Ives. Courier opened a print shop in New York, later joined by Ives in 1852. Courier and Ives prints give a valuable record on how Americans lived in the 19th century. In the 20th century, Lithography was embraced by Edward Monk in Germany, then Kirchner, Kandinsky, and Paul Klee. Picasso in Paris collaborated with the Morlo Brothers, and in England, David Hockney and Henry Moore, among others, re-established lithography in the public eye. Lithography was revived in the United States when June Wayne opened the Tamarin Lithography Workshop in Los Angeles in 1960. Countless artists worked at Tamarin. In New York, Robert Blackburn founded the printmaking workshop in Chelsea in 1948 and began printing for artists and encouraging friends to experiment with lithography. In color lithography, 
A separate stone or plate is drawn upon for each color. For photolithography, a color separation done on the computer with Photoshop generates color transparency to be exposed to light sensitized plates. There are several types of light sensitive lithographic plates on the market developed for commercial photo offset printing used by artists. With Ponto polyester lithography, a drawing can be done directly on the plate. And a color separation can be achieved by printing the polyester directly on a laser printer, then inking the plate. For paper lithography, the same process can be done using simply a, a paper photocopy, treating it with gum arabic and inking it with oil-based ink. In serigraphy, also called screen printing, the image is drawn with stenciled material on a mesh screen. A squeegee is used to force ink through the mesh screen and onto the printing paper. A different screen and stencil is used for each color. The artist Masaki Noda has used paper stencil extensively, tearing multiple stencils to produce an exquisite layering of transparent colors. His prints have sometimes close to a hundred layers. Part four, Shinkole. Shinkole is a way of transferring an image to a thin, delicate paper while simultaneously bounding that surface to a heavier supporting paper. Shinkole is best achieved with Japanese papers such as Gampi and methyl cellulose glue. It can be done using a single thin paper or two thin paper of different colors or with cut out shapes of color paper sandwiched between the shinkole paper and the printing paper. Mixed media. There is no way to summarize the mixed media approach to making art. Here I'm looking at six mixed media printmakers and their techniques. Richard Pitt says, my art is about the imagination expanding emotional experience that increase the capacity for feeling a full life. Jess Clark says, I see the age old question, what is the imagination and where does it come from as underlying every work I make. Slavko Jurek, I am a romantic and a meliorist, a crusader who believes the world can be, can be made better by human effort and a work alcoholic who simply believes in good. Shirley Tortensen, we are relators of information. Janet Milstein, I love the process and I love the sense of expectation as the print is revealed. Marcin Volarczyk, it is a challenge to find yourself in society, but I now realize it is possible to express yourself and to find your own way in the art world. Digital transfers. Transfer is a technique of lifting an image from one substrate and depositing it in a new surface. Robert Rosenberg pioneered the concept of transferring newspaper articles and image into his prints. Currently, this is one of my favorite techniques, pigment transfers. I wrote, I search for a world where senses are exaggerated, where altered colors are real, where we are endless, and the air, the mountain, and underwater are all one. Post-digital graphics. The core of modern printmaking is to improve reproduction means of graphical communication. The use of digital techniques in printmaking is revolutionary, but only in a sense. Although artists' adoption of computer numerical control tools and related devices has resulted in novel printmaking processes, 
it still conforms to enduring printmaking convention in that the print is produced through physical interaction with a transfer mechanism. The term post-digital goes beyond just using a computer and techniques like those created by Mike Lyon, Murray printmaking with drawing and other graphic mediums. So, why is printmaking still alive today in our digital world? David Hockney had an interesting opinion on this. Different processes are involved in creating a print. Even graffiti art is printmaking, using stencils to output an image. So, printmaking is a form of non-conformity and encourages artists to express themselves differently. The variety of techniques is, a, is an inviting medium for artists looking for inspiration. Printmaking has survived through history because of its collaborative nature. There is a collective effort to share further techniques and methods. They are both the element of tradition in some techniques and at the same time, the evolvement of materials and technology. One example is how the typewriter, which evolved from printmaking, is now replaced by the computer. Thank you very much. Um, so we're going to open up the conversation to some questions. And if anybody has any questions, just put it in the chat and we can um, address those. Um, but uh, for now, I have a couple of questions for you. Um, so uh, you mentioned your New Jersey girls. Yes. So what is the print making community like? Do you ever collaborate with anyone? Well, I, I do in a way that uh, they are both in my in both of my books, my New Jersey girls and some of them are here to, uh, today, actually, they are totally professional artists and we've been working together for 20 years and they were my guinea pigs uh, in both my books, actually, <laughs> whenever I wanted to try out something, I was trying it out with them first. Uh, they are uh, extremely lively and talented people and uh, during class, we absolutely share everything. Uh, Everything I learn, I I try it out and share it with my students, of course, but uh, it goes both ways. I think we all learn that way and um, they are, they still continue uh, on their own, on their own. We, I still see some of them and um, yes, it's an ongoing show. Hi, Chris. Hi, Janet. <laughs> Um, yes, uh, so my, my students, both from the, from the New Jersey and from the Art Student Leagues, are basically adults who have been with me quite a few, uh, a few years. And I mean, of course, there are some new people all the time, but, but it is a, my, my Art Student League people are also with me for many, many years, and we absolutely share everything. It's, a, it's an ongoing experimentation. Printmaking is very collaborative in a way. And in my class, uh, everybody is going to look at each other's work. No, not pe people do not stay at their desk. Everybody moves around and goes to see what the next person is doing. And everybody is doing something different. There is no assignment. You know, uh, the people come in and uh, they talk to me and they say, okay, I'd like to start with this and then we go, but everybody is doing different work, very different work, different techniques. So it's a, it's a continuous sharing. Nice, nice. So um, you mentioned a couple of techniques and you mentioned a favorite printmaking technique, but what are you most comfortable working in and what mediums have you worked in? Okay, well, I, I started with etching, aquatin, the whole intaglio thing many years ago, and I, I did it, you know, very large, large plates. I also did all kind of work in lithography. Uh, seal screen, not much. That's not really my thing. But uh, a, a little bit of relief, but not much. Mainly etching and lithography. 
And then I moved on to photo techniques, which is really my interest because now I am uh, very involved in combining uh, digital work with printmaking. So I, I learned uh, photo etching, photo lithography, and photogravure over the years. And uh, currently, um, my favorite two things to do right now is pigment transfers and uh, polymer solar plates, which is a form of photo etching using uh, light sensitive polymer plates uh, that uh, you could expose it to the sun, but we actually use a, a light exposure unit with UV light. So the, the, the pigment transfer uh, allows me to basically transfer color image that I work on digitally on my computer so I can uh, you know, work with many layers and many composition based uh, with photography, which is my thing now, digital photography. And so, so the pigment transfer is great for color because you are transferring inject color pigments. And the solar plates is, is more a monochrome technique because of the nature of the plates but it allows for extremely um, uh, details and uh, interesting imagery in photography, but monochrome. The, the, the solar plate and etching, I, I looked at them as my microscopic sculptures where the plate is etched either by UV light or by acid or whatever in, in little steps, you know, and that's what retains the ink. And I always thought of printmaking as remarkable because it joins uh, it joins drawing, it joins painting, and it joins sculpture. It it absorbs all of that two dimensional and three dimensional effects, and you can do it all in printmaking. Nice, nice. Well, that leads me to my next question. You're you're bringing up photography um, and digital photography. Um, how is digital photography and graphic design changing the art form of printmaking? Yeah. Okay, so 20 some years ago, I was doing uh, photo etching and photo photography from film, you know, with a dark room and all that. Mm -hmm. That was very painful. I was not a great developer. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, labor intensive and all that. And then I discovered the, the computer and all that. And so digitally, I find a lot more freedom personally because, um, because I'm, I'm good at Photoshop and I'm, it's just a new medium, it's just a new dimension. And so, so I can combine the, the digital world into the physical world of printmaking so we can if someone comes to me with a particular image, we can discuss what is the best way to do it in printmaking. And sometimes it would be a pigment transfer, sometimes it would be a color separated photolithograph, and sometimes it would be a monochrome solar plate. Uh, and sometimes it would be a combination of all that. Basically, you can always combine things with printmaking. And so the digital world is combined now with the physical world of printmaking. Mm, nice, nice, nice. Um, you mentioned one-off prints in your introduction. Do you have a favorite monotype? Yes, yeah, so actually I am doing also monotypes right now, which uh, monotypes you can do in many, many ways, um, but you can do it in oil-based or water-based. And right now I am into the water-based monotypes, which is basically uh, using watercolor. And I, I use large sheets of films or mylar and I paint on it with watercolor. I'm doing a, a lot of work on floral stuff right now. And so to paint on the mylar or plastic allows you to pour water and to, to erase it with a paper towel if you don't like it and to get all the kind of uh, watery effects. Then you let the pigment dry. And then when you're ready to print, uh, you wet the paper to print and then you dampen it and you place it on the press with the 
painted film, so the wetness of the paper reactivates the dry pigments and prints, so the pigments are picked up on the paper. So this is a water, basic, basic water-based uh, monotype. Um, but um, with, mo with water-based monotype, which I'm doing now because I, I'm enjoying it, uh, you cannot re-wet the print to rework it because it would dilute the watercolor. So it's a one thing shot, it's a one time thing. If you do it with uh, oil-based inks, which many people like to do, you can do it in layers. You can print something on a layer and then re reprint and reprint, and you can re-wet the paper if necessary. You can also add elements rolled up you know, objects or leaves, whatever, and add them. So the monotype or monoprints, it's it's basically a, a very, uh, it's it's fast. You don't have to think too much. I mean, I don't. It's so it's uh, very liberating, as opposed to some techniques in printmaking where you have to think ahead. Many think many pr printmaking techniques you have to think ahead and flip it and and you don't know what you're going to get until it's printed at the end but with monotype and monoprinting uh you see it right away so it's also rewarding it's good to do a little bit of everything you know <laughs> yeah yeah we actually have a, a question in the chat that goes back to digital photography if you don't mind um has the advent of digital opened up a new influx of printmakers as opposed to the darkroom printmaking? Uh, I don't think so. I think um, I, I think the the people in, interested in printmaking they come no matter what. I think a lot of time I have people coming with a, a photo and saying, "Okay, how can I do that?" But um, no, I don't think there is a di the difference between the fact that it's digital instead of, instead of film. I think the the printmaking part of that it's still the same. The interest is the same. Um, I think what I was trying to explain earlier uh, in my introduction is that uh, now the the inject print is respected and accepted by museum as a print. So that has changed. In the old days, you know, an original print had to be like this and like that, and it has specific rules. But now you see many, many respectable museums showing an inject or pigment print, and it is a print, uh, which I accept myself because I also uh, think that it's acceptable. So that has changed. The 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 normalcy or the the rules on original originality has expanded. That has that is a difference now. So um, it doesn't mean that every every uh, digital print is printmaking. It doesn't mean that either. It's it's a bit tricky. I don't know. I think uh, you have to work on the image, uh, give it a, something of your own to make it art so nice. I, don't, I don't think you can do a snapshot and say okay this is an original print you know <laughs> yeah yeah well one more question for me um are you working on anything or any special projects oh yes i have two big shows coming so yes i'm definitely working on uh i was mentioning this floral prints that will be shown uh, uh in midtown from january to june and so I am making those. They are originally, they are actually uh, watercolor monotypes, which um, I d then I painted and printed. And then I'm reworking it digitally because I will print them on metal in very large size. So that mm -hmm. is one project. And my second show uh, will be in Chelsea. And for that, I will show a lot of the botanical printing I've been doing these last two years. Uh, I've been working on botanical prints, which is printing from the tannin of prints instead of inks, and uh, a whole series of um, mixed media on wood panel uh, with the themes of forest, trees and forest, and then 
the animals in the forest. So those are my two big projects. Oh, nice. Going. Um, we have another question in the chat. Um, do you have experience or an opinion on risograph printing or risograph printing? No, I do not. Okay. Okay. I, I don't know what that is. Oh. Uh, yeah, neither do I. <laughs> uh, can the person asking the question tell us what it is? Paul? Can you explain risograph printing for us? No, he must have. Okay. No, sorry, I don't I don't know. Okay, okay. Um well uh any more questions? Oh, it's screen printing. He says it's screen oh, oh printing. screen printing, okay. Well no, very little. I did a, f a little bit in, in college, but but uh it is not my favorite. Of all, I, of course, I, I included it in the book because it's very important to many artists, but uh, not for it is not my personal interest. Uh, though I, I was mentioning my friend Masaki Noda, who, who is an expert in self screen, and he did beautiful uh, work with hundreds of layers in his self screens and all that. But uh, to me, it's 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 I don't know the. The physicality of it does not attract me somehow. So, no, per personally, I really worked uh, extensively in etching, um, lithography, and all the photo techniques, and, um, and now, of course, the mixed media, water, moto, uh, monoprint, and all that. Very little six screen for me, uh, and very little would block for me. Although it is a very important part of printmaking, that's why I'm so glad I could include this um, talented artist in the book. Nice. We actually have another question. Um, how have digital printing inks been improved over time? And how has the art market influenced the improvements in the quality of the inks? Okay, that's an interesting question because the the digital inks are what they putting out is usually not not for the purpose I'm looking for because I'm always looking for transferring. So so they are making inks, for example, when they print magazines and such. Uh, in the old days, we could do transfers from newspapers and magazine in color very easily because it was uh, poor quality. Uh, printing, uh, poor quality printers and and inks, but now the the quality of the paper is 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 high. You know, it's 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 a glossy paper on magazine and such, and the ink is better. So it's great for the printed material, but it's not great for us printmakers because we want to transfer this. <laughs> so um, in terms of my own printers, I have a few here. Uh, so I use, uh, of course, inject pigment pr print. So that I just try to uh, follow up the latest printer that is good, you know, Canon, Epson. Uh, um, so yeah, it's uh, it keeps on going, and and you have to follow what's happening. So I say in the in the printing world, in the commercial printing world. They are better and better, which is not good for us because we can't transfer as easily. But for the um, printing world of our own printers, they are better and better too. So that's good. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so are there any more questions? Does anybody have any questions? So, um, Okay, well, um, if there are no further questions, thank you so much, Professor Kobe, for joining us today and um, speaking about your book, Modern Printmaking. Um, so for more information on FIT authors or how to submit to be featured, go to the website at authors.fitnyc.edu. 
You can also follow us on Instagram for upcoming FIT Authors Talks info at FIT NYC Library. Thank you all for joining us and have a great evening. Thank you so much. Thank you.